First of all, I want to say thank you very much for all of your interventions and all of your exposure. I just want to say one thing uh, that I would like for us to do. The LRA, in my own assessment, has done very well. He says something that we need to take account of. We can keep beating the same horse over and over and over and over. This is the Capitol building. And this is Capitol Hill in the Liberian capital, Monrovia. I, Deputy King Saki, Deputy Commissioner General, Technical Affairs. Do you have a swear? Do you have a swear? That the testimony I'm about to give. That the testimony I'm about to give. And to my recollection. And to my recollection. Is the truth. Is the truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. This Capitol building, as we know it, is the examination hall for every government appointee, like in the case of Thomas Do Na. He's just been appointed by the president of Liberia, Dr. George Manawia, as the Commissioner General destined for the Liberia Revenue Authority. Thomas along with his principal deputy, Dekonti T. Kinsaki, are both on the table for that great examination, which is often done by honorable men of this Senate here in the Liberian capital, of course, in this capital building. This is just one of many confirmations that go on within this city and of course, here in the Capitol building. My name is Thomas Dona. I was born to the union of Athanasius T. Na, Sr. and Susanna Cummins in Tapita, Nima County. My name is Dekanti T. King Saki. I must give God the glory and honor for his grace bestowed upon me to be here today, to be given another opportunity to serve our country. Over the last 20 years, I have worked in the banking sector with the Liberia Bank for Development and Investment as loan officer, with the International Bank Liberia Limited as vice president. I also work at the U.S. Embassy in Monrovia. And as a civil society activist, I work for the Center for Transparency and Accountability in Liberia which are led to become the National Chapter of Transparency International. Currently, I lead the Carter Center Access to Information and the Carter Center Access to Justice Program as Interim Peace Lead. At all these institutions, honorable senators, I engage with issues that mattered more to our country working to give loans to small businesses and ensuring that citizens got funds from relations through money grant. I was at the heart of the resuscitation of the governance structure in Liberia through the instrumentality of multi-party, multi-partner initiatives such as the LDRTI and the Governance Management Economic uh, Program, GMA, where I, I represented the United States Embassy. And those two multi-partner organizations were established to recalibrate governance structures that had become dysfunctional because of entrenched, entrenched vested interests and mismanagement. My work in Center touched so many areas, natural resources. Many times I was called to plenary to, to, to interact around different issues, passage of several legislations, different acts, the Public Financial Management Act, the LERTA Act, the Access to Information Act. So I was a mainstay in this uh, chamber, both at the legislature and in the Senate. So the issues that I dealt with at Center also dealt with the issue of uh, fiscal management. 
But most importantly, I was at the heart of fighting corruption. Our appointment by His Excellency Dr. George Manawia is a demonstration of our commitment to public service and achieving the development goals of our country. Today, I have returned to the Capitol for this, before the same committee, seeking your confirmation again for my reappointment to the position of Deputy Commissioner General for Technical Affairs of the Liberia Revenue Authority. I am fully aware of the difficult task which lies ahead to drive the authority to your expectation and to the expectation of the tax-paying public. I have served in various capacities in government since 2009, starting from Commissioner of Custom and Excise in the Ministry of Finance, Assistant Minister for Revenue, and also as the first Deputy Commissioner General Technical Affairs, Liberia Revenue Authority. The following achievements need worth mentioning of our journey over the last nine years. We led the institutional startup and the strategic <coughs> visioning under the leadership of the first Commissioner General, which is Frida Tamba, as a member of the first executive management team of the newly established LRA since 2014. We accomplished the development of a five-year corporate strategic plan, which implementation commenced in 2016-2017 fiscal year, that clearly articulated four strategic goals to be a team. We led the introduction of direct transfer payments, mobile money, and electronic filing into tax administration in Liberia. Today, 100% of all our large taxpayers are paying taxes by direct transfer payments. We also led the reform of customs administration in Liberia from 2009 to 2012, and it resulted in the re-engineering of the customs business processes and procedures. We were able to transition from a manual environment to a fully automated customs operation at three ports that accounted for approximately 95% of trade into and out of Liberia. This resulted in customs revenue increasing from 2009 by 109%. The development and implementation of a three-year customs modernization strategy, the revitalization of the post-clearance audit, and the introduction of custom compliance and enforcement program to include risk management, intelligence, and anti-smoking operations are but a few of our successes as Commissioner of Customs. We also represented the West African region at the Policy Commission of the WCO for two years. We participated in Liberia's negotiation with the World Trade Organization as a member of the country's delegation, and we led the negotiations on eternal taxes. Liberia became a member of the WTO in December 2015. Honorable Senators, as the government embarks upon its pro pro agenda for prosperity and development, as well as the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals, it is imperative that the government of Liberia develops and implement a domestic resource mobilization strategy that will seek to broaden the tax base, control tax expenditure, implement an integrated tax administration system, invest in sectors with strong tax contribution potential, and overall increase the resource generation capacity and capability of the government. Also, the LRA administration will ensure that the completion of the implementation of the five years corporate strategic plan with its four cardinal goals of administering revenue legislation in an efficient, fair, and transparent manner, 
maximizing voluntary compliance, building an effective institution at all levels through excellence in leadership, accountability, technical and real infrastructure capacities, and transforming revenue administration by utilizing effective information and communication uh, technologies is a team. Amongst the many outcome of this corporate strategic plan is to ensure that the professional and technical capacities of the tax administration is kept at a level that will guarantee the provision of the best services our taxpayers require and deserve. Honorable members of the Senate, in addition to my many years of experience in customs and tax administration in Liberia, please be assured that I possess the requisite academic credentials to assist the Commissioner General of the LRA in surmounting the Herculean task which is ahead of us. For Mr. Na, coming from student politics into activism, banking, and then of course, going into the diplomatic circle, if may say, has got to be well informed about the different formalities that one has to go through here in front of senators. Dekon T. T. Kinsaki, for her part, has been at the LRA. So she's pretty much okra of what to expect. Knowing the two people is indicative of their own performance at the LRA. So we laid out uh, before the Senate Committee on Ways, Means and Finance and Budget some of our own ideas, you know, as to how we can take the LRA to another level. And one of the uh, key emphasis, you know, we made is the extent to which we can expand the revenue base. But by expanding the revenue base, it means we have to be able to create more jobs for our young people, for people across this country. If we have more investment here, it means we'll have more revenue. If we cannot do better than what we are currently doing, it means our revenue will continue to hover at 500 million and we'll have shortfall. What could, you, what could you say could be your own call on the senators? I thought there could be ambassadors so in bringing investors in the concerning what can they do to bring investors or create jobs and make so there are more uh, uh, income from every sector of our own society. Yeah, well, you know, that was what I talked when I, you, you heard me when I talked about the triangulation of our processes, right? The LRA will have to engage, engage with customers. Okay. In the customer bracket, we talk about businesses and we talk about citizens, right? On the other side is our interaction with different government functionaries, whether it's the legislature, and we talk about the legislature in acting laws. And then the judiciary, for them to educate cases where people are trying to evade taxes expeditiously. So we have to be able to engage in ways that will cause every one of us to feel satisfied. And it requires more work. You remember what I talked about tourism, for instance. You know, I try to clarify in the simplest terms for us to understand where we have to take our country. The other people are doing it. And I don't think it's magic. Pushing for good and better tax administration is their main mandate. And of course, domestic resource mobilization, which is the latest effort by the government, previously by the past government, and this government has to push it. With all the kind of utterances, we are of the conviction that the two people, Thomas Dona, Dekonti T. Kinsaki, and the rest of our commissioners that will be coming on board, to help Liberia in its efforts for taxes and revenues generation for Mama Liberia. Let me address my attention to the newcomer, Mr. Commissioner General Designate. You come from a civil society environment. You've been associated with a lot of these 
agencies involved with uh, highlighting corruption, ensuring transparency in the society, to put it in one term. Now, you have now been given a political appointment. My question to you is that, because listen to your expose, what you're going to do at LRA, what's going to happen at LRA, it sounds more of an activist posture. Are you prepared to take off the activist cap and put on that cap of heading a governmental agency? So how do you intend to marry those two quite different, distinct environment, one from that of where you come from and where you're going now? You know, uh, I believe strongly that in life you must have a value system. And whether you are in government, you are in civil society, wherever you work, that value system runs. If you look at my CV or my work experience, you will realize that it's quite balanced. Not only have I been a civil society activist, but at one point I was a banker. So somebody will say, as a banker, you must have been conservative. I also worked in the US Embassy, working on different uh, governance issues, dealing with uh, the Ministry of Finance, dealing with GMAP issues. And at that point, you must have been diplomatic. And then we were able to transition after we established the Center for Transparency and Accountability, and obviously with CENTA, I think it was a more defining uh, part of my professional development because I had to transact business with the legislature. I had to be very candid in some of my interaction. But why, as an activist, for instance, I serve as joint co-chairman with the EU and the Governors Commission on the Liberia Development Agenda, which many times convene with the President of Liberia with different uh, international partners. And in those meetings, obviously I had to contribute, but I think activism is part and parcel of our, all our being. I do not think I go to the LRA, LRA as an activist, but I will go out to the LRA as somebody who understands the complexity and intricacies of the problems that we're facing in Liberia and will do my best through consultation with different stakeholders, including the legislature, good relationship with the Ministry of Finance. And obviously, if, if you remember in my statement, I said that we want to engender a customer-friendly environment where business people will see the LRA as partners, where communities that we engage, you know, to ensure that they pay legitimate taxes will also see us as, as partners, but we'll treat them like customers. And the other question was about the long term. I think in terms of long term planning, I'm not going to the LRA with my own plan in my hand. I think there are other plans, and like I said, they have a fantastic staff base. But my work is also about leadership. I believe strongly in leadership. How do we motivate that staff base to be able to take our revenue? Like I said, we've been averaging 500 million for a long time now. How can we go beyond that? There must be something diametrically wrong with what we are doing that keeps us hovering at that level. So I think that's the kind of leadership we have to bring. Right now, our economy, in terms of short-term ideas, our economy is not the best. Well, I mean, it's definitely not the best. 
And I know it's going to be tasking to be able to achieve some of the, 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 the resources required for our country. But like my colleague said, I think we're going to work to do as much as we can. For instance, we have to be very innovative and strategic <coughs> about, for instance, expanding revenue in real estate. Why are people paying the real estate taxes? Well, I mean, I could elaborate on some of the ideas if you don't mind. Say, for instance, I think we are at a stage in our country where some of our real estate taxes has to reside in the counties. Because if people are paying taxes, there must be an enabling basis for them to continue to pay. If, if, if our revenue will support local government structure, especially one aspect, real estate, for instance, would not be a basis for, for, for people to want to pay. I think that we need to start to think outside the box. It's good to put all the resources in the consolidated account. But it appears that we have to give incentive to people to pay. And some of that incentive will be about how we diversify and decentralize some of our, 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 our resources to some of our people paying taxes to, our, to, to the government. I guess it, it may be an idea that requires substantial, you know, discussion. But it's a, uh, I mean, um, you know, the, the activists of me tend to table things, <laughs> you know. So, but there are other things that we will do. And I'm sure, like I said, with the assistance of a lot of different people through consultation, most of those ideas will be tabled. And eventually, much of it will come here for your approval. I have two concerns. There were three of us, and go ahead and touch the one regarding real estate tax collection. I'd like to start with the CG. I have had the time to review your CV very meticulously. I think you are well grounded in two important areas that do not necessarily relate to the area you have been nominated to. You are very strong in public administration. You got a master's degree from Harvard. You got a bachelor's degree in accounting. And you also have a very solid background in public policy. That's my major. What I'd like to do is to get to help me to understand exactly what, what you have in mind that will boost revenue through tax collection in a in the LRA. Throughout all your comments, I didn't hear anything about tax breaks. You know, tax breaks are important incentives for taxpayers. You give them the impetus, you give them the, the need to pay taxes and what they get in return. And I think the last few months, or maybe the last year of President Sally's administration, she tested out a free port. People whose containers were there for, for months and they were about to be auctioned. And she sliced the cost by half and people started running to pay the taxes. I'm more interested in your background in revenue, your training in revenue. Yes, you are training in accounting. Mm. You are a public administrator, you are a policy person. I agree. But revenue is where you are going to. Your job there would be to give up money, to collect money. I don't see that as part of your CD yet as a strength that will give me the, the certainty that you will do well. I think we, you, you talk about breaks, but in my conversation, you heard me talk about incentives. And I think you mentioned both. So incentives can, 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 can be breaks at times. So the extent to which we can use incentives, amnesty, you know, and different variations to encourage people to pay their taxes, we will do that. But you're also aware that it's a process. It's not all that we think all happens. There's a lot of different, you know, political economy issues and different, you know, an analysis that's required. But definitely we, we, we are committed to anything that will ensure that we increase our, our revenue. So breaks and taxes, those are things we'll look into from time to time. <coughs> Deputy, 
You have been at LRC, LRA for a long time. Again, you've been re-nominated. What are the ideas that you are bringing forth that weren't there before? Thank okay. you. What new is being brought to the table? Many a times, it may not be necessary to reinvent the wheels. What will be required will be how do you innovate and make what you're doing more effective and efficient. I believe the foundation of our tax administration with our corporate strategic plan has actually laid a groundwork that if fully implemented will give us a professional institution that will help us to accomplish and achieve our goal. So what we will want to see and we will try to drive along with the Commissioner General is to ensure that the technical capacity of the staff are built. We've opened the country and we've invited a lot of foreign direct investment. While it is good for multinational enterprises to come to one's country, they also come with their own challenges. International tax issues like transfer pricing, like misinvoicing, are but a few of the challenges that we have to deal with. And for our staff to be able to effectively carry out audits in specialized sectors like the natural resource sector of mining, um, of agriculture, and the rest requires that they have the requisite skill to go in and conduct those audits. Over time, we've automated our operations, but we, like the uh, CG has said, we want to be customer-centric. How do we accomplish that? We want to take the LRA to the taxpayers, and to do that, we want to build on the existing technology that we currently have to be able to take our services from within the LRA to the public. We can accomplish that first by utilizing the infrastructure and posting our services online. We've accomplished that with our customs system, where we now have our asset system online. We need to also replicate that with, we need to also replicate that with our domestic tax. We believe where we make the environment easier for people to file and pay the taxes. Compliance will be much easier and we'll be able to accomplish of that. So we will also focus on education. We believe that with the requisite knowledge, the taxpayer will be encouraged to be compliant. And so our focus will be on moving into the various communities working with the community, with the schools, the university, and even domesticating tax training and tax or, or, or the taxation, the law, into the university such that people get exposed to taxation <clears throat> and letting them to understand that as a citizen of a country, one of the requirement is to pay tax because your national development <laughs> is dependent upon that. And so we will work along with the new CG and the rest of the officers at the LRA in showing that these programs that we have started will be carried out but in using more innovative activities. Relative to the budgetary or issue that was raised, we do acknowledge in the past that budgetary shortfall has been a challenge. One of the things that we are going to do is to work closely with the policy makers. Remember, as the LRA, we are administrators. So we are there to collect. But the revenue to be collected starts with the policy framework being set up with the Ministry of Finance, coming to this honorable uh, legislature and passing it into a law, and then it becomes a requirement for the LRA to collect. So the process of developing the budget and looking at those assumptions that reflect the actual economic conditions will be part of what we'll do and start on a day-to-day -day basis where we're able to analyze using proper scientific and statistical uh, information to ensure that as we make those forecasts, 
they become a real replication of what the economy looks like and so that when we make those projections, the necessary tools to ensure that we're able to carry out and collect to meet up with the, uh, the budget estimate for the year will be accomplished. So we know that there's a lot we have to do and of course, we working along with the Commissioner General provide all of the institutional knowledge that will be required to make those necessary decisions but at the end of the day, working with other stakeholders in ensuring that the projections are realistic, therefore the attainment of them will also be a reality. Thank you. On the issue of uh, Mrs. Stamba, me mentioning her in my, in my speech, or my, look, you know, I believe that in every individual there is a good. I mean, that's my philosophy. We all have good and we all have bad. And in this country, we must accept that when people contribute to nation building or to a process, we must provide them the accolade in as much as we would disagree with them. I do not like all that she has done. I also like some things that she has done also. But also, she's somebody who I'm succeeding, who established the agency. Don't you think it's befitting that I say thank you? Maybe I, I may not need to have a feast, but I think it's proper, you know? Because like I say, I go to the LRA, I can go into the, to, to the complexity of who was qualified and the different processes, you know? And it's also, Senator, it's not because somebody got two master's degree make them more competent for a job. I have seen situations like that in many cases. But notwithstanding, one assurance I want to give you that I'm not talking about merit-based processes in emptiness. We should have a process where people will go apply for a position. And if they think that they were not treated fairly, they can appeal the decision. You understand? And I don't think that should only be with LRA. That should be in every other and public institution. That should be part of our public life. But one thing I want to, 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 to emphasize, uh, Honorable Senators, before I say, before we, 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 we lose it, which of course I mentioned in the conclusion of my statement. Because I also see my colleague, you know, why we not? So when we speak to the, taking the revenue from 500 million to higher levels, it's not about us beating the horse to death. We can, we, we can, so right now we have the latitude to expand the revenue base, so we do that. So we go to, to 700 million, or we go to 600 million. We sanitize processes at the port, so people, business people do their work efficiently, we go to another 100 million. Now there's a tendency that usually there's a spiral and then there's a there's there you get stuck and then you can't go any further. So if you look at the analysis of our revenue trend, you will realize that we're as low as a hundred million and we started to go up and then we've reached to a place where we stagnated. Now how do we and uh, work to change that? Now in terms of the LRA engagement, we have some scope to expand the pace. But we also, as a country, we need to push other agencies to do just as much as we expect of the LRA. Say, for instance, go to Rwanda, go to Ghana, see how much money they make from tourism. I have been to Riverside, wonderful place. I cannot imagine with that pristine beach with the pristine beaches, you know, and, 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 and wherever you go, that we still cannot attract visitors to this country. And that's the reason why we are struggling for, 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 for foreign currency. So it's not only about exporting and adding value to, to, to commodities, which of course we, we are failing to do, but just the expansion of our tourism base. So you can expect LRA to continue to go to the same people, people at the NIC, people at the Ministry of Commerce, 
I remember when I worked with, with GMAP, some of the things we were working on was this same issue of easing the business climate, right? Making sure that today Rwanda, Mauritius are at the top of the doing business uh, 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 indicator. And that was once a goal of Liberia. And I think uh, 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 Minister Setuma knows that. All of that we have failed to, we, we, we've just allowed, you know, to wait. We need to start to work on that because that is the other side to revenue generation. We have to attract more foreign direct investment here. We have to build the capacity of our young people so that they become more entrepreneurial and not just believe that, you know, there is government job waiting for them. In many other countries, there are incubators where young people are coming up with interesting applications. They, they, they're creating jobs for themselves. We have to do that. So the, 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 the challenge, the LRA face, yeah, <laughs> we are supposed to make sure that we collect from people. But the more people that other people create, the more people we also collect from. So I think that's a very important aspect. When people from Ministry of Information come here and you, 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 you see they got that tourism section, you have to ask them because that Rwanda, Rwanda is making more than 500 million from tourism to the point that, you know, I support Arsenal. If you look at the Arsenal jersey now, they say what? They say Rwanda. And people challenge them. People who want for us to continuously Survive on aid. You know what they said in Rwanda? Why are you taking your money to advertise, you know, on Arsenal? The Rwanda government said, look, this money is because we make a lot of money in tourism. So we can justify giving 30 million if we can get 500 million or 400 million. I think that's rational. What do we make from, from tourism? I was on the PUP, public use investigation I was one of the investigators I saw how from in Sino you go to the forest how people misuse and abuse our forest and it took a lot of resources from here why would we add value to wood that I see you go to all our 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 stores people are inputting furniture from from Turkey from all over and we got wood. There must be something wrong with us. And we need to change that. And if we change that, the LRA will, 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 will increase the base. Because those people who will be doing that, it means we'll have to do to, 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 to get money from them. And you see, for every investor or every investment, there are different sources of revenue. Some will come from what? Income, income taxes. Some will come from corporate income taxes. <coughs> different levies, social security benefits. So we need to do more. A lot of our neighbors and our other countries are stepping up. So we need to step up. And that's the challenge we have. But one good thing I can say when I talk about triangulation, it means that we're not just going to sit down to the LRA NMO and allow people to sleep on the other side. And we're just trying to beat the rest of the country and the people to collect. We got to highlight and say, look, y'all got to do something. Y'all got to do your work too. So it's a process that we envisage that we're not just going to say, you know, we're just supposed to collect. We've got to say, look, you've got to create something for us to collect. And that's why the cordiality in our approach to you all, to our approach to the Minister, Minister of Finance, to the, 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 the LR, the, the Minister of Commerce, which is on our board, we will have these conversations. And I think we, we, we have to have them. Or else the proper agenda will not succeed. In Liberia, in time past, it has been dependent on the extractive industry. This time around, it's more focused on domestic resource mobilization. And to do that, there has to be serious tax information, tax inquiry, tax education, and tax marketing, which we are involved with. And basically, our advocacy is about Liberians themselves getting involved into paying their fair share of lawful revenues into the cup for Somama Liberia. At the Capitol building, it has been all 
about the Liberia Revenue Authority, the LRA. And Thomas Dona and Deacon T. King Saki have been at the disposal of senators coming from a special committee. Policy is policy. So you guys got to make sure they go to your work along with the Ministry of Finance so they can have a good way of which we can make some projections and your own input to be able to volumize the taxations. They've been facing this special committee on ways, means, finance and budgeting, going through the scrutiny that needed to be done to have them to be confirmed. A great confirmation hearing it has been. And I want to say the whole, as we know it, is the last place before taking that seat, having been appointed by the president, like in the case of Thomas Dona and Deacon T. in Saki. But I thank you very much for all of your articulation. I think you guys are ready for this job. And we let, the, let us be, let there be a signature worry. We'll continue to talk so we can put our little in interventions as we, as we go along. I hope we can, we can create ourselves a situation where we continue to interact. They are going to join other commissioners at the LRA in performing that special tax administration that is so much of requisite to Liberia's growth development and rebuilding. From the Tax Bureau Services Division and the Communications and Media and Public Affairs section at the LRA, this has been Alvin Jask. And thanks so much for having been there. And I'll see you next time.